all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we uh, see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these, brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Okay, let's start the skit. It was the week before Christmas, and all around the house, Labs McPerfect was fussing and beginning to grouse. Not a thing out of place could ever be found, for she was constantly straightening. You could eat off the ground. Her nails were perfect, not a hair out of place. Her clothes, they were costly with frills and with lace. Her tree was brought in by the greatest designer, who cost her a fortune. But hey, this was minor. <laughs> she dusted her Bible with painstaking care, in the hopes that the pastor would notice it there. <laughs> <laughs> With her nativity up and her presents all wrapped, Gladys felt sure she was ready for a long winter's nap. When what to her wandering eyes did appear but a note at the door saying a guest would be here. The note was embossed with gold letters impressive. It was scented with lavender, which she thought quite excessive. Now when Gladys turned over the note so mysterious, she could scarce take it in. Or was she delirious? A prophet, a priest, and a king all in one. A visitor was coming, and Gladys was undone. What a disgrace to be caught in her houseboat. Oh no! As she fled to her closet, all in a frenzy, she ripped through her closet with clothing a flying. She searched through her wardrobe, everything trying. emerged in colors so gracious. Oh. Truth to be told, she looked quite bodacious. <laughs> True to form, she made her house ready and waited for royalty, feeling quite heady. Determined to be ready to receive her guest fair, Gladys went to the mirror to fix up her hair. She decided to sing as she then set her table. Joy to the world of parties. She was sure to impress. This is the king. She was sure to impress even more than a friend. The king. I wonder how many courtiers you have. At last came the knock. Gladys felt all a twitter. Is him already? Oh my! Wait! King! Wait! I'm not ready! It was very last minute, but she threw on some glitter. Hello? The man at the door was so unexpected. Uh, thank you! He was filthy and tired. You're not the Utterly dejected. What do you want? I'm looking for food. I don't have any food. And what's that on your table? <laughs> That's not food. Be gone! I'm looking for the king. 
Dang! <laughs> How could this be that tonight of all nights this person would show up and give me a fright? Gladys grabbed the spray as she wasn't beyond admitting she was glad to be smelled the rid. A rid of the smell he'd been emitting. <laughs> Unnerved just a bit, Gladys poured out some tea. I must steady my nerves if I'm to meet royalty. I certainly hope that this is the king and not someone else who wants some little thing. Well, that had better be the king. She opened the door thinking of some mottos to find someone else collecting pop bottles. What do you want? <laughs> Yes? Come in, come in. I cannot hear you. What do you want? I need some pop bottles and some stuff. You want some pop bottles? What? You're thirsty. Well, this is BC. You go open your mouth and you'll have lots of drink. <laughs> Gladys was almost undone with her rage and sat herself down, her Bible to page. This, this is so crazy, the night he will come to instead have these strangers, a kid and a bum. When only a moment or two had elapsed, Mrs. McPerfect answered the door and collapsed. That's better be the king. Quick to recover, Gladys jumped to her feet, and to the sick creature said, No, 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 sweet. Yes, and what do you want? I was just in a car accident, and I... Oh, don't puke on my floor! <laughs> what do you want? A phone. A phone? I don't have a phone. Unless she could rid of, get rid of this foul smelling puke. Yes, right. <laughs> what else could go wrong? This simply can't be. Don't they know who I am? Chose me. <laughs> a knock at the door gave Gladys a fright. Of course. She swung wide the door, half expecting this sight. Oh, you're not the king. What do you she want? opened it. All she found was a boy who was poor. Come on in and shut the door. If you're cold, you want to shut the door, right? Yeah. Okay, shut the door. But get on the other side, because I don't want you. <laughs> now, Gladys considered herself kind to the poor, but no one could blame her for shutting the door. After all, she was expecting the king any minute, and these strangers might mess with her oh-so-perfect visit. Gladys sat down and just started to snore. When what did she hear? But a knock at the door. There stood a man with disheveled appearance, an ex-convict, just perfect. Another interference. Oh, no. <laughs> Who are you? I just got out of jail. I'm looking for a church. Do you know where one is? Oh, yes! It's right down the street! <laughs> <laughs> Our lady in question didn't know what to think. Her hopes for this evening were beginning to sink. Something inside her was feeling uneasy. Had she done the right thing? She was feeling so queasy. And then in a twinkling, a bright light to shine, and an angel appeared who was clearly divine. The angel told Gladys of her real worth and reminded her of the humility of Jesus Christ's birth. They talked of the strangers, and God's spirit helped her to see what you do for the least of these, you do it for me. Gladys now realized the error of her way, and she knelt on her knees, and she started to pray. It's always amazing what God can redeem. We must remember Christ's birth was completely supreme. And God knew the end from Christ's humble beginning, which would offer us freedom from a life full of sin.
think because the thing is over, I think we'll go out there to do that. All right? All right. Can we do the music again? Yeah, it's fun. <laughs>